Hi, everyone, and welcome to another powerful conversation with yet another powerful woman. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined today by Francesca. I've been following her posts for a very long time, and she is a complete inspiration when it comes down to um, having a business, but also having a personal interest as well. So I'm delighted to have you here today, Francesca, so you can um, spread your love and inspiration to as many people (laughs) as possible. Oh, bless you. Thank you for having me on. Um, Yeah, so I'm obviously Francesca. I started running a business four years ago, actually. I can't believe it's been four years. What a ride. And it grew quite quickly. And that was from, I believe, one, believing in myself, putting myself out there, being brave and sharing the journey of what I'm doing and being real because social media, there's a lot of people that you're not sure about on there. So yeah, that's how how we run. And I've got a business partner as well. Um, and she's the absolute opposite to me. Yeah. And it works. So you your your core business is accounting, but I think yeah. you have as the name sort of of uh, your company uh, yeah. sort of indicates you have a slightly different slant to accounting. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah. So we when we was thinking about the business name because it's like oh what should we call ourselves? It's like an exciting but hard part. Yeah. And as traditional accounting firms, they usually use your own personal name. So like for Charlotte, CW Accountancy or the initials. Yeah. And so, and I said, Charlotte, we need something that's to just discuss what we're about. And yeah. Frank, so we use Future because it's F for my name, Cloud, C yeah. for Charlotte, and accounting is what we do. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, we, we need a strap line as well. And um, the guy that did our branding, he actually came up with a strap line and it's uh, your friendly forward thinking accountants. <laughs> so cringe. <laughs> But <laughs> it's different. And yeah. I said, we aren't going to wear suits. We're going to get branded hoodies, T-shirts, gym wear, because I was obsessed. I am obsessed with the training and mentally, you know, keep my, my yeah. body healthy as well. Um, so we did. We And I thought, I'm going to talk about what how I am personally on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn yeah. then, more so four years ago, was very businessy. Yeah. Um, and because I came in like a bit of a whirlwind – shall we say, I grew quite quickly. So is um, LinkedIn your main platform or your preferred platform? Um, it was my preferred at the time, but I also did use Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and I also use them very, they're very uniform. I don't yeah. have a different Facebook and no one can see me on there like some people or Instagram. They've all got yeah. the same sort of picture as a profile. I try and actually, sometimes I'll do a Facebook post that I will move on to LinkedIn or vice versa, and it works really well. At the end of the day, I've got to be me on every single one. Yeah, I might do a bit of a different approach on TikTok, which I've started doing quite recently, but it's still the same person and same mindset and um, ethos behind it. So, yeah, so it's a bit of everything now. And I've started my own YouTube channel, which is exciting and I'm being very vulnerable on YouTube. Um, but it's funny because even for accounting, business owners want to trust what you're on about. They want relatable people and people yeah. buy from people. And that's probably why we grew so quickly. Yeah. And I think I think that's um, it's really interesting when you um, look through your posts. A lot of them are about your life um, and less about, you know, bean counting or, you know, yeah. balancing books and, and, and all yeah. that sort of thing. And that that's it's that's quite a striking difference yeah yeah so it was that, yeah, something- that thrown in so like when I first started posting I would say what my day was looking like I'm going to this network event and I'd shout someone out yeah I'm using zero for accounting oh we've you know using it was receipt bank back then but it's now dex we use dex what we were up to the challenges we were having and then people can relate to those things yeah. Why oh, don't you use zero? That sounds really cool. All right. I I take my box of receipts in in my Audi bag to the accountant. I want a bit of that. And that's how <laughs> you know. And I made jokes about. It. I even yeah. did. I even did jokey sort of stigma kind of posts that I'm do. I'm doing like a role play of a stuffy accountant. Yeah. And they actually went quite viral. But you have to be careful. I was a bit like nervous to do it. But then I thought stuff it at the end of the day it's the truth what I'm saying but I'm just putting a a fun spin on it yeah exactly and as you say it's about attracting your people anyway so yes that you you know that don't like that won't you know just won't yeah 
attracted anyway. Yeah. So how did you how did you learn all of the social media tricks? I didn't. I just kept going and going, and then you learn as you go. Like yeah. I used to see post at seven a.m., post at nine, po don't post at that time. I used to think, oh no, I've got to post at this time. And then I've I've come to realise you don't have to. You just got to be do a post, comment on other people's, have conversations. And then it's as simple as that, but be consistent. Yeah. Don't just do it for a week and then go, oh, that's boring. I've had no leads. And then you give all. Yeah. It can take yeah. months. It can take months. But we, I got leads quite quickly because we were very, I was very open at the um, solution we have to people's businesses' problems. Yeah. And you've got a solution and you can yeah. give a spin on it. I think people are like, oh, what's she going on about? This sounds cool. This sounds different. Yeah. And maybe where I used to work as well was good for my CV as, you know, the profile. And I shared that. I did a lot of networking. I do a lot for the community. So it wasn't just a case of me just going up as a 23-year-old a from uni going, oh, yeah, I can do this for you. And then yeah. it will get loads of likes because I'm being brave. It's not just yeah. about that. I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I share. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as, as a result of that four years on, I think you said it was four years, didn't you? Yeah. Um how what sort of proportion of your business comes from um social media posting versus referrals yeah i think mostly from social media Fantastic. and also people need to be reminded to give a referral don't they yeah. and we've we've done that by what we asked our clients to do was a feedback form for us just to give us like which is really uncomfortable yeah and then if you, and obviously remind them to do referrals, can you do as a Google review? And then we'll put you in a hat to win a 50 pound Amazon voucher. Yeah. And then we did that and gave that to one of our clients, which was cool. And we had some really good feedback. And the only constructive criticism was maybe do a newsletter. Yeah. Which is via email, an update, which we we yeah. thought about. We're not sure still, but it's something we could do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think so. We do get some referrals, but you have to keep reminding people of that. Yeah, people don't necessarily think like that, do they? You can just do a no. referral. You have to say, "Oh, let me know if you've got any businesses you work with." Then yeah. <laughs> that we can help. Um, and Facebook, I still get some referrals through Facebook Messenger. Never, I've had a couple recently from Instagram, which is nice to see. Yeah, that's a bit of a slow one, but again, I can't, I'm, I do it all myself. And I can only dilute, you know, you can't do only do so much. I yeah. definitely want a marketing team in the future. Yeah. In-house, hopefully. So how much of your time, these questions are just so other people get a sense of what how it can actually be. And um, yeah. how much of your time on a daily basis do you spend pulling together your posts? I think I spent a lot more time back in 2020 when lockdown happened. And I went, had more time to kill, if I'm honest. Yeah. That might have built my following. And also I did very silly posts then. And people like watching it. Obviously, it, yeah. apparently it lifted their spirits. And, and yeah. that was nice to see. So I did a lot then. Now, not a lot of time, to be honest. Yeah. I'm just still consistent with my pose. Because it when you just put about your daily life, it's so much easier than coming up with creative posts at the minute. Yeah. I think yeah. I still need to do creative posts at some point. But on the Instagram, I'm forever updating my Instagram stories, like my breakfast, sometimes my dinner, where I am, what meeting I'm at next. Yeah. And I love it. So it it might take a while initially, but then you get into the habit and you yeah. sweep it. Yeah. So daily, a couple of hours now. And that's me commenting, liking. I don't do as much as that on LinkedIn like I used to. Yeah. And I think um, what, what what you're saying is some of that resonates with my experience of just even having these LinkedIn lives is that you could sit and procrastinate about the the perfect way of doing it yeah. that is is going to look as professional as somebody who's got a huge budget and outsources it and has a whole team behind them. But I kind of figure that it's better to have something than nothing and yeah. for it to feel yeah. warm, authentic, to get personalities yeah. across um, and just say, okay, I can put my perfectionist to one side. Yeah. And be done with any editing, but at least yeah. I'm doing it. And yeah. um, just go on the basis that everybody likes listening to to people talk and learn learn from that as well. Yeah. 
Mine aren't polished at all. So many times, I procrastinate. I did it yesterday. So what I'm trying to do is do a post on LinkedIn. I thought, right, I'm going to go back to my TikToks. We've got a future cloud TikTok and my own TikTok. And I sat there and I thought, right, I've had two conversations this week about clients not knowing their sales, how much the turnover is and their profit. And I was shocked. I thought, mm. how can you not know? So I thought I'm going to do a bit of a video on it. It's only a minute long and I'm going to upload it to TikTok. And I looked again, and within like half an hour, this isn't masses, but for, is for me. Like, I had it had 600 views. So something about TikTok, but it's only had a thousand views in total. So it's nothing major. Yeah. I thought, oh my god! And then I got got about 20 followers from it. And I wow. don't really follow anyone. I don't really. So it just shows you. And I'm not an expert on TikTok whatsoever, but I'm just willing to try different little things so yeah. I can get my head around it. Yeah. So today, my TikTok post, right. I was going to go to Asda to do a passport photo because I thought that's the way you have to do it. It's been 10 years, so I don't know. Then I started Googling, what do I need for a passport? New photo. And then there was this link to do it digitally from your house. I was like, what is this? So I said to my partner, can you take a photo of me in this light? Because you have to have light behind you. And we were having a right laugh doing it. I had my pyjama bottoms on. I just quickly chucked on the top and I videoed me doing it. I said, right, this is what I'm doing. I'll show you the link. And I posted that on my TikTok. Fab. And I just thought, and I put on it, bye-bye as the photos, because that's not going to be a thing, is it? No, no. That, honestly, I'm still, like, in shock. Yeah. yeah, and you don't even have to go to the post office to queue up anymore either, or get no. somebody to sign the back of the photographs. You don't. And it's nine ninety five for these photos. So top tip, if you've got a renewal coming up, just do it from home and get good lighting. You're laughing. And they edit yeah. it in this photo thing to make it right for the fit of a passport now yeah. i don't i haven't sent off my passport yet so i'll let you know if it works but apparently it does it's verified and everything yeah did you have to well, have like so made it out. straight grumpy faces you know yeah yeah <laughs> I made, and i i made content out of it yeah yeah exactly yeah it just goes to show doesn't it yeah and they're probably thinking oh who's, who's, i know someone's someone's already commented saying oh i've done that before and someone will watch it and go oh my god i didn't know that yeah. And then they'll do it. But I like people, yeah. I like being in the know. I like people knowing who I am. And that's okay. Or I want them to know what exercise I do, what I eat. And that, and I like that. I like, to, I've took them on my holiday with me. I've just yeah. done a whole YouTube video of my holiday. It's a 40 minute long. And I, I, I was effing and blind in editing it because I thought, why am I doing this? <laughs> this is taking ages. That's because it's all new and I'm still getting used to it. Um, but I like watching that on YouTube. I like watching. I'm nosy and most people are nosy aren't they and yeah. I, do, I do an Egypt review yeah yeah no exactly and I think um you know those sorts of you put the time and the effort in but that's something that you will always have as a as a memory um, yeah that's it true really nice. it's a good yeah yeah it is true like my last holiday to Cape Verde when it was just me and my partner that went with no kids amazing um I filmed it and it got 4,000 views within yeah. a month of it yeah. going out because people are searching holidays to Cape Verde and then obviously my YouTube was coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think I had a post last summer of my husband and I dancing in the street um, and that got, that got loads of views as well. And it was just... Where was that of, on? Um, well, it was on uh, LinkedIn. Oh, did we you? Were, I don't know if I saw yeah. that. Yeah, and we were in um, Aix-en-Provence and we were just walking around the streets and there was uh, a live band playing. So we just um, decided to dance in the street. I love it. Brilliant. It that's, yeah. that's yeah. sort of thing me and Steve would do, to be fair. Yeah, yeah no, it's good fun. Yeah. yeah. So what's your biggest challenge been setting up your business over the, the last four years? Um, so for the first three years I was like this is all right maybe year three and year four have been my my hardest years actually first two years was brilliant I was like buzzing was hiring I think it's running smoothly in the employee process then year three and four it was like oh god what have we done <laughs> and then you start the so employing is the hardest part yeah. you can't please everybody you could be the kindest, most nicest person in the world and someone will still get annoyed. And yeah. that's what I've realised. And that's been hard. And you, yeah. you used to, even I'm, I, I've got over the fact that not everyone's going to like you to a degree, but there's still that element that, because I share a lot personally, that's actually me. So when someone doesn't like me, it's that, 
oh, how dare you? It's not like I've got a persona yeah. and you think, oh, well, it's not really me. Yeah. And that's why so many people on social media won't show their true selves, that fear of not being liked. So they'll just put a persona on and just make it up as they go along sort of thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as they make sales, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah so no, that's I'm, been hard yeah. employing. And when you say that, you mean specifically the employer-employee relationship? Yeah, I feel really lonely now. Like I came from a corporate job where I could be the employee and have banter in the office, talk to people, moan about people if you want, because yeah. we all do it. Yeah. Now I'm the employer. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Hats off to any employers now. God, they've got it tough. Yeah. You know, it's really that, that. Yeah, it's a lonely place to be in. And that's why I like to talk to the likes of yourself, different business owners um, yeah. who are in the same sort of position and feel a bit lonely for different reasons, not just because yeah. they're employer, even as a sole trader, you're lonely, aren't you? Yeah. Um, yeah, so when employee you're someone, hard. When you're someone that's um, as authentic as you are and, you know, what you what you get is what you see kind of thing. Yeah. When you're recruiting, are you looking for people that, are like that as well you i've learned you can't it doesn't necessarily you need a range of different personality types yeah i, I have to realize that not everyone does things how i like to be them to be done not everyone's as outspoken as in they might not necessarily they've got something to say even if our values are communication and we go on about it and go on about it people still won't communicate because yeah. they've got that fear around there and that barrier and that's yeah. okay so i've got to learn how to handle different people. Yeah. And that's new to me too. And I'm open to that. Um, yeah. It, you can't hire everyone the same as you. You need different, like, like I say, my business partner is completely opposite. Yeah. I'm definitely more the talker and the feely person. She isn't. Yeah. You can't just have that one person ruling the roost like that. You've got to have someone that's got empathy and feeling. Yeah. Are you okay? Let's sort this yeah. out. Oh, I've got a feeling there's something wrong. When As soon as you do that, they open the door for them. That's okay, so you can sort it out. Yeah. People don't like opening a can of worms, whereas I'm open to doing that. Yeah. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? That's hard, yeah. though, because I take it all on my, my shoulders. Yeah, and I, I forget all the, the different um, – uh, there's different sorts of bias, isn't it? Is it like a confirmation bias or a halo bias where you you, oh, you want to recruit people that are, you know, an image of, of yourself, but actually yeah. it's been proven that – if you have as much diversity as you can in your workplace, yeah. that diversity of thought overall translates into more success, better productivity. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. That's yeah. what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. That's so true. I'm glad because it's so easy to go, oh, we just need bubbly people that can talk. <laughs> that are yeah. good on social media. Yeah. And you don't. But however, people don't know what they don't know. If they are tempted by social media because they've seen what I can do. Even if you're the most introverted, they can do it. So Sue, our admin lady, God bless her, she's come along leaps and bounds. She now goes networking on our behalf and she's not even an accountant, but that is okay. Yeah. She speaks very highly of us, do you know? She helps yeah. on social media for my yeah. other business. So I run a social networking group in Newark. She helps market that. Like she's pushing yeah. her boundaries. Yeah. And you've got to bring out the best in people. Yeah, exactly. I can't do all that on my own either. You know, no. as we know, it's not going to be the case for yeah. not everyone will listen to the advice either. But yeah, and I think that's where it's it, it becomes about um, being in collaboration with people. And I say I say it all the time. It's like yeah. the power of many coming together is is yeah. um, is is so much more and. Um, we all have something to learn from everyone and from every experience we have, even if it's a negative experience, there's, there's a lesson or a learning in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, and sometimes if we can find a way to leave our ego at the door, then there are so oh, many. My ego is gone. It's been stamped. <laughs> <laughs> in order, that's another thing. I'm not the best at everything I do. I know I needed to hire people that are better than me. I knew I, it, that was an obvious thing to me at the beginning. And yeah. I thought everyone would think like that, but they don't. No, they don't. They so don't. Yeah. Even the like managers will not delegate as easily as I thought. No. That's okay. I don't know. I, that is absolutely fine. But I'm like, 
why wouldn't you like I like the thought of other people just pushing their boundaries and giving it a go yeah so yeah. that's been a massive learning yeah and I think that's you know people people see I think that that makes you a very conscious leader which is obviously a, a natural skill that you have but mm. I think tradi- traditionally people um, lead from a, a defensive position of you know I've, yes. I've got to, to where I am and I need to protect that at all costs yeah and mustn't have anyone below me um you know show me up and expose oh. me to what I think I'm not um yeah actually when when you allow everybody to be their best and you work in collaboration then that's why everybody is better um that's interesting that is isn't it I never thought of it yeah. like that but you're true you've hit the nail on the head that some people will be like that yeah and I think it, it's a, I think it's a sort of a, a general, a general shift. And some, some of that comes from there's lots of talk around um, shifts from masculine energy into more feminine energy. And that's yeah. not like a male female thing, but it's just yeah. a shift from, from the doing and the thinking into the, you know, the, the being and the being more collaborative rather than. Yeah. Um, and I think it does, it does make quite a big difference. Yeah. Oh, I like that. There's lo- always something to learn. Yeah, exactly. And I think ha- having that curiosity for for learning is is just all the things you can learn off different people is incredible. I know, I know. And I, as a business as well, we've adapted, and we'll probably have to adapt again in another few more years because AI is coming in thick and fast, isn't it? And it's like yeah. we want to keep all, we want to be at the forefront of that and yeah. use as much automation as possible why wouldn't you and then yeah. use the human touch to have the conversations and that's where our business will be going even more yeah. than it already is so i was watching a, a pod, um, podcast the other day or a youtube something um and it was saying that um for marketing activities for example a marketing agency can do 30 percent more for a client's uh, for the same amount of money that a client would spend uh, they could do 30% mm. more if they use AI. Do you, you have any insight on how that would, would be in an accounting space as well? What sort of activities um, might benefit from AI? It will be probably the chat, how you do blog posts for your marketing potentially. Bookkeeping yeah. obviously is a big one. But again, with bookkeeping, no matter how automated it is, you'll still need a human to review it. Yeah, it will just not need any humans to input it. I think it will just yeah. get easier. At the minute, it's not that great enough to let it go. So we yeah. still have bookkeepers. Yeah, um, I think bookkeepers will be more like your accountants. Yeah, and they need to have the confidence and the personality skills to have the co- uh, conversations about what their expenses is looking like, what the profits are looking like, where you can reduce costs. Talk about how the business is doing. Yeah. Um, because automation is going to take over the mundane, I think. Yeah, yeah. Do you so have any other? Do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, definitely agree on the content, and I can definitely see it for things like um, automation. But as you said, it definitely it, it's about getting that balance between which parts of the process make sense to do manually versus which ones um, you can rely on them being done. Um, I think another area would be like. I suppose advice if 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 you could confidently say to a, a chatbot um what's the most tax efficient way of purchasing a car through my company um and th- this is the sort of uh, income or profit or whatever I have and it could just like come up with yeah. that, that that I can see that sort of thing being quite useful or yeah. um you know I I don't know which um what type of company structure to have? Um, yeah. What would I go for? And then can you yeah. can you like register a company's house for me? Yeah, yeah. Potentially yeah, like those know. sorts of things. People Google those things now and they yeah. still get it wrong. Yeah. So I know that will probably be more effective, hopefully, in time, but we have tr- yeah. tested it out on a couple of those questions already. Yeah. And it just it just it wasn't basic, it wasn't simple. People want simple answers. Yes. And if it sounds like an accountant answering it, they're going to leave more confused and make it up anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so hopefully, however, I'm not a fool to think that I just want one income stream anyway from Future Cloud. I want to diversify it. I want to make different income streams because I don't know what's coming in the next five to 10 years. Yeah. And I think that'll be all the better for Future Cloud anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 
so it's quite, fun. quite exciting really isn't it yeah it is it is it's, it's, it's exhausting but exciting yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've just got to keep believing in it and believe my my ideas are all right and not think, oh, no, I'll get laughed at. So I have to ask, where does all your um, self-belief come from, do you think? Um, I actually don't know the answer to that, but it could be a lot of stuff that's, should we say, gone wrong in my life. So I've not had the best relationships, so I'm not an expert in relationships as such. But I also have learned from how not to be treated, how you should be treated and the type of relationship I want. So that gave yeah. me a bit of self-belief that you don't need to put up with that. Yeah. And, and I'm very good at, I'm actually quite good at advising others. And I love doing that. And I'm, I can do that more so because I'm in a good place with it myself. Yeah. And I've yeah. learned from probably reading, Googling, researching relationships and inspired by things on social media. Um, I've had my son was poorly for a while when he was six that might have given me like a bit of a reality check mm. and made me believe that your know, time's precious maybe yeah. it was from that as well um yeah I don't know I don't know I just woke up one day I remember thinking I don't want to rely on anyone to fund my money so not the kids dads I want to do yeah. it for myself yeah and I thought you've and you, I don't want to drink anymore as in go out drinking I don't want to waste money and I was very young when I thought that. My, my kids were very young too. Yeah. And I just lived a very sheltered life, I'll call it. Even though it sounds sad, but yeah. not in a, it wasn't sad. Yeah. Not for me anyway. And I just stuck with it. And I just yeah. kept improving myself and knew it was a long, slow process. And look at look at it now. Yeah, I think that's really, really inspirational. And I and, and what you say resonates as well. I think I've maybe got a similar sort of mindset, particularly when yeah. it comes to, say, relationships. I. I know that um, lots of people um, unconsciously um, seek out similar pattern behaviours um, in yeah. their relationships. Yeah, I've always looked back and reflected on um, each each relationship has been a process of refinement that um, I've got. I don't want to say more fussy, but I've known what I've wanted more in each relationship that I've had, and yeah. I've ended up with a husband that's really loving and supportive and I you know and and you know is a wonderful husband and a wonderful dad um, oh. and I think but I, I don't know where that approach has come from as yeah well. Just, it's little I, little things yeah but then I, I think I like that in everything I do everything has yeah. to be not has to be but is a process of continual process. refinement it's like yeah um, it's test and learn and it doesn't work you pivot you change you you go on yeah. and, and small yeah small daily changes and exactly. looking after myself and fitness and, and eating better and yeah. going to bed earlier. Yeah. Sleep's so precious to me. And it's like, yeah. I know it sounds geeky, but it's so true. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. I go to bed very early because I get up so early because that's yes. my favorite. That's my, yes. that's my precious time of the day. So yeah, same. I can relate to that too. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So um, just to finish off then, do you have any sort of motto or one sort of piece of advice that you would give people? No, there was a quote that I saw and I don't know if I'm going to be able to remember it because I didn't know you was going to, I didn't know any of these questions. So it was a bit freestyle, but the, I used to worry a hell of a lot in my twenties mm. and worrying is like walking around with an umbrella waiting for it to rain. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. You can't do that. So when I catch myself, I'll quickly say, has it happened yet? Is, you know, you could go, what if that goes wrong? What if yeah. they don't like me? What if that works too much? What if, hang on a minute, get yeah. rid of the what if and turn it around to like, but it will work. And if it doesn't work, you'll adapt. And, yeah. you, you know, and that's what I do a lot of. Yeah. If that helps anyone. <laughs> I think those are words for a very wise woman, I have to say. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so if people want to find out more about what you do or follow yeah. you on any of your social media what's the best way I, I know I've got yeah. I'll have all of the links yeah. but where's the best place to get hold of you you can either inbox me on inbox me on LinkedIn and I can send you them direct but to be honest my name's on LinkedIn if you search for it you can Google, Google my name see where I come up and see if you can spot me from there but I am on TikTok Instagram Facebook so I'm on every platform basically fabulous that's great 
Well, thank Come you on. so much for joining me. I've loved talking to you. Um, oh, thank you. I've yeah, enjoyed it. True inspiration. So thank you. Thank you.